Hello, it's really good to share this Eucharist with you, uh, whether you're on your own or with family, it's great to be with you, but looking forward to the time when we can be here in this church together. Many were shocked and some surprised, but all of us were saddened at the news that Peter is taking early retirement, finishing in August. I've worked with Peter for 20 years. He's been a wise and trusted colleague and I've learnt so much from him. He's a wonderful work person to work with who doesn't clutch things to himself but enables others to use their gifts and is so good at spotting gifts in others. He is also a very dear friend and I'm going to miss him hugely. I'm sad for me and for the parish that Peter is leaving us. But I'm so glad for him and the family for knowing the right time to retire so that he and they will be able to enjoy his well-deserved retirement to the full. We wish Peter and family all that is good for this next stage and we pray God's blessing on them all. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may wish to pause the service to sing the hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Collect for the first Sunday of Lent. Let us pray. God of the covenant, as the 40 days of deluge swept away the world's corruption and watered new beginnings of righteousness and life, so in the saving flood of baptism, your people are washed clean and born again. 
throughout these 40 days, we beg you, unseal for us the wellspring of your grace, cleanse our hearts of all that is not holy, and cause your gift of new life to flourish once again. Grant this through Christ, our liberator from sin. Amen. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 9. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all fresh flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. For God's holy word, thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through the water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities and powers made subject to him. For God's holy word. Thanks be to God. So you may wish to pause to sing the gradual hymn, O Lord, all the world belongs to you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder what you're going to give up for Lent. I can hear the cry. I've given up enough already in this pandemic. My freedom, my social life, my holidays, my day-to-day encounters with others. What more do you want me to give up? During this Lent, we as a church are encouraged to give up or cut down on meat. This would help the environment in many ways. But the idea of giving something up is not just to help the environment or to lose weight or to give up something we've been trying to give up for months. This time is also about setting aside time for God, being focused on what God wants us to do in our lives, being intentional about our relationship with God. In Mark's Gospel, we're told that after Jesus' baptism, the Spirit immediately drove Jesus into the wilderness. It's typical of Mark's Gospel to be short and fast-paced, as if Mark wants to get on with letting people know the important things about Jesus, letting them know about the good news that he has been witnessing. And the Spirit didn't gently lead Jesus into the wilderness, according to Mark. He was driven. I wonder if we feel that that about the lockdown and the isolation. We didn't choose this. We know it's necessary, but we didn't want it. But we've been driven to it. Perhaps for us, we feel we're in such a place as a desert or a wilderness. We've lost all our markers. We've lost all our certainty about what lies ahead. We've been taken away from everything we knew. This happened to the Israelites in the Old Testament. They wandered through the desert for 40 years, led by Moses, until they reached the Promised Land. They complained bitterly about all the hardships. Moses complained to God about having to lead these ungrateful people. God provided them with water, with manna to eat, and with fire to lead them by night, and a cloud by day. He gave them all that they needed. But it was a time when God's people discovered who they were and who God is. They needed this time to bring them closer to God, more reliant on him and more trusting of him to provide all they needed, preparing them for when they got to the promised land. They were ill-disciplined slaves, having lost everything, but became a victorious people, ready to enter the promised land. As Jesus went into the wilderness for the 40 days, he too needed to be prepared for his ministry. The first temptation, turn these stones into bread, tempting Jesus to take care of his own needs, to provide his own food miraculously, rather than trusting God to supply his needs. The second, to throw himself off a high mountain and prove that God would save him. But Jesus refused to put God to the test. The third was the temptation to follow the ways of the world rather than God's ways. But Jesus' response was to quote, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. In each temptation, Jesus proved that he would follow his heavenly Father in all things and do just what he asked him to do. And as he came to the end of his time in the desert, we hear that angels waited on him. A wonderful picture of God sending his messengers to take care of his only son, who'd been through so much, but came out victorious and ready for the work that he came to do and the salvation that he came to bring us all. Also, some other people who went into the desert 
were the desert fathers alongside desert mothers. They were early Christian hermits and monks who lived in the desert of Egypt around the third century AD. They, however, were not driven into the desert, but felt that they were called by God to give up all and live a solitary, simple life devoted to God and to prayer. We thank God for these people and their prayers and for their writings of deep spiritual significance that we still have today. So for us, perhaps we can feel driven rather than called into the wilderness that we are in at the moment and then coming into this Lenten time of 40 days. First, we must embrace pain and loss that we felt and acknowledge all the suffering we've been through in this time already. Then we must look at what God is forming in us and what he's preparing us for as we see signs of coming out of lockdown. I heard a speaker likening God's work with us through this time to the angiogram he just had. He described it as an investigation into his heart. And he said that God is doing this to us at this time, seeing what is in our hearts. What might God have been doing in all this pain and suffering? What might he have been creating in us over this time? And what more in these 40 days of Lent? When the Israelites were preparing to go into the Promised Land, Moses said to them, When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he's given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws and his decrees that I am giving you today. For us, as we allow God to work in our hearts, as we go through Lent, and see the end of lockdown coming. Let's not forget what God has been showing us during this time. And let us take the valuable things we've learnt into the new future we have for ourselves, for this church, and for the world. And remind ourselves that this will not just be recovery, not back to old ways, but transformation. And a quote from Evagrius, a desert father, who said, Cut the desire for many things out of your heart, and so prevent your mind being dispersed and your stillness lost. Something for us to take into this Lenten time. Amen. Uh, we thank Ian Rees for writing these intercessions for us today. So let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for God's goodness. As we meet together at the start of another Lent, either on our own or with others, we thank God for bringing us to this day and pray that he will hear the prayers we offer for ourselves and others. We pray for peace throughout the world, for the leaders, especially in areas of warfare or other disasters. Lord, give them strength in our hearts to put hostilities aside and in true humility seek peace with one another. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our country as they strive to bring about a safe exit from the current COVID restrictions. Give them wisdom to do what is right and safe. And we pray that everyone will play their part as we learn to live with the virus. We give thanks for the NHS staff and volunteers as they continue the mass vaccination programme. And we pray for the medical teams who look after those with the virus with such love and care. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world and for this parish, particularly for Peter as he and his family prepare for his retirement. We pray for Mary and Liz, our church wardens and PCC members 
and all who lead our churches. And we give thanks for all who make our filmed services possible. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. Lord of compassion, we pray for all who are ill, especially those on their own who are, or who are struggling to cope. We hold before you Bob and Elizabeth, Lauren, Philippa, Margaret, Grace, Steph, Tom, Vittorio, Patricia, Caroline, William, Vera, Jean, Julia, Kate, Jane, Brett, Vera and David. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently and for their families and friends. We thank you for their lives and all they meant to us and give thanks that they are now at peace with you. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for the coming week, the decisions to be made, the friendships to be enjoyed, the pains to endure and the unexpected to delight in, know that, knowing that in everything you are there with us. O oh, you who are ever giving life to all life, moving all creatures, root of all things, washing them clean, wiping out their mistakes, healing their wounds. You are our true life, luminous, wonderful, awakening the heart from its ancient sleep. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has, been, has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So please, if you're with others, offer a sign of peace. And if you're on your own, I wish you God's peace. Please do uh, pause to sing the offertory hymn if you wish. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, 
by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, God of our everlasting covenant, for your promises are steadfast and your provision is sure. Through your people's desert of 40 years, you were constant in fire and cloud. With manna and mercy, you sustained every step. You made Jesus' temptations of 40 days a theatre of truth, where your word stood, stood strong. In every age, you have shaped your people through times of wilderness and wandering, of temptation and trial, and brought them into the land of promise and the life of covenant. And so with all who have walked the wilderness way in every time, and all who walk it this day, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we join the unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Enduring God, as you sustain Jesus in hunger and thirst, through this meal, strengthen us to keep our Lenten feast. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, as we remember Jesus' saving passion, transform our insatiable desires into hunger for the feast of this table. Send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Forgiving God, in this season of repentance, make your mercy sufficient for every need. Come to your children who are in their own wilderness and make their wanderings holy paths of learning your truth. Strengthen all who face the threshold of temptation or the tumult of trial. Seek those who are, whose hearts are contrite and meet them with grace. Come alongside your children who suffer under the sin of another and give them power to live as your beloved sons and daughters. Renew your church from the depths of your heart where justice and mercy meet. Bring us with all your saints to the day when all who watch and pray for your kingdom behold your salvation and meet you in your resurrection. God most glorious, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your continued presence with us. Please stay close to us as we go through this Lenten time. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Grant us your peace. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally together, come into our hearts. We embrace you, knowing you are already there, and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ, given for us all. the blood of Christ shed for us all. Let us pray. Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink this cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may want to pause to sing the post-communion hymn, Eternal Father, strong to save. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, 
to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Stay in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.